Hello everybody and welcome back to Fix the Rust Bucket. In this video, we are gonna try and recondition and repair this bumper, which is off of our 08 Pontiac Grand Prix GXP. Somebody drove across the front of the car, ripping the bumper into two pieces, actually in multiple pieces. Let's get right into it. All right, so unfortunately this car has seen better days, this being not one of them. I'll post some pictures up. Before I started YouTube, before I started doing YouTube videos, I should say, this car was rear-ended by an unlicensed driver and we had to repair the back corner of the vehicle. We haven't completely finished the bumper yet. The bumper has to be reconditioned or repaired as well. We got it pushed out, but that's about it. All right, so now here we are again with the front end, another impatient driver, and I'm not gonna get into it, leave it at that another impatient driver in the wrong lane went across the front of the car as you can see it's ripped it in half um the two grill pieces we only have one left and i believe this was for the passenger side driver's side one got shattered and then underneath the here down below where the fog lights go there was a similar grill piece like this long thin piece that went across there we don't have those we're not sure if we're going to hunt down these pieces again and put them on or if we're going to do a custom grill on it we'll get to that later on we got to get this back together the hit was basically on the very front nose part of it as you can see this is the tire marks so the sides didn't get the corners i should say didn't get really damaged this corner over here now this part right here is for the corner on the passenger side that did get ripped off so that part right there is where it the bumper mounts to the front of the fender again this corner thank goodness it really didn't take this didn't take you know too hard of a hit okay so is this bumper repairable i believe it is repairable and it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of time but i believe we can get it back to looking like it used to here's a picture of it right now on the car we're going to actually use this picture as a reference i'm going to print it out and we're going to keep it up here all right so that's what we want this bumper to look like again let me get everything out of the way here and I'll show you what tools we're going to use to get started with on repairing this. Okay, so to get started, this is what we're going to use to do the repairs. This is actually the rare repair kit right here. We'll go over that in a minute. Just have your basic heat gun. And this is actually a hammer and dolly set for metal shaping, metal working. All right, so now here's, let's get into the kit. For repairing you know plastic welding basically or repairing bumpers and other plastic parts this kit i'll leave a link in the description of where i got it from on amazon I had good reviews so we're going to use this kit the kit this one is the deluxe version that we picked up so it comes with 40 welding little welding plastic sticks which i haven't even opened yet but let's open it up right now so there's 40 plastic welding sticks these are made basically out of the same material that these bumpers are made out of. And you can identify that. I'll, I'll show you when we get started with the bumper itself. There's a spot to identify what, what your bumper is made out of. There's another way to do this, but we're not doing it right now. And that is your year make and model of your car or close to that, that range of when they were built. You can take, if it's a remoldable plastic, you can actually take an old bumper and take pieces off of that cut pieces off of that and melt them down and reform it we might have to get into that with this bumper i'm not sure yet but back to the kit so this comes with the kit 40 of those sticks here's the kit itself and i don't know is there a part number on it somewhere here i don't know i'll i'll leave a link in the description like i said let's get into the kit now so it comes with the kit you get here it says aluminum automotive body repair tape basically it's just a foil tape that you use to put your pieces back together if you don't have this you can go always down to a uh, big box store and get that metal foil tape that they use on ductwork type stuff that will work this is just paperwork 
here we go so this is welding reinforced mesh and i can tell you right now this is probably like a screen which again everything is sealed all up just, just cut this open i have a feeling because this bumper is damaged so bad that we are probably going to be using all of this and having to get more so here we go so in this bag is basically window screen almost it's like a window screen it's a metal wire mesh that little stiff bristle wire brush uh, this here is back to those sticks these are the tips i'll show you here all of this so those plastic little sticks i showed you it's actually for welding and this kit came with two irons i guess you would call them irons i'm going to call them irons because what else would they be it's almost like a soldering gun i'll show you that in a minute so if you see there there's a hole right on the top and there's a hole in the bottom for both of them these are identical you get two of them that's great but what happens is once you have this attached to the the hot iron you insert this plastic through that hole it gets heated up inside of here and comes out the other end and you can be that's that's the welding part of it you can sit there and keep inserting the wire melting it onto the bumper and forming it while the bottom of this iron heats up the bumper piece itself giving you adhesion to both of them let's see what else here's the iron so it looks like your basic soldering iron i believe this just gets a little bit hotter than what a soldering iron would get i'm not even sure it's 80 watts 120 volts i don't know anyway here is two flat irons also you get with this deluxe kit and that's the reason i bought this kit it came with so much extra stuff you can buy just the basic kit but then the, the deluxe kit came with uh all this extra stuff for like another 15 bucks or something like that but here you are these two flat irons they are used here's some more window screen didn't even know it was in there there's a bunch of more stuff in here. There's more foil tape too here's that window screen mesh again so these irons basically once you cut your patch in your area that you're working on you can use these irons to heat up the metal and the plastic underneath embedding this screen into that these basically easily just screw on to the iron so you get the point they screw onto the iron there and then there's your your working surface your iron goes onto the working surface melting the plastic or heating it up some more material plastic material sticks that you would use again filling in the bumper more wire uh sandpaper not bad you can use that more of that foil tape here's the foil tape i was talking about you actually get quite a bit in this kit the foil tape and then you just peel the backing off and we'll show you later in the video what we're going to be using the foil tape for it's to hold the whatever side you're working on hold it together while you're working on it ours is a little worse we might have to stitch it i don't know yet and last but not least little base to hold your i'm gonna say soldering iron but to hold your iron here just sits there and holds that it's pretty cool that's not bad it keeps it off the your table so let me get all this put away let's get the bumper back over here and ready to start working on it all right so as i'm getting the kit everything laid out and getting ready to go so i can get the bumper back in here and start working on it i unfolded these wire mesh basically window screen that they gave you and if you could see here it's got those creases in them one there one there you see those creases that was not too bad but I don't want those creases in there when I'm trying to, I want a flat, I want them to be a flat surface all the way across when I attach it to the bumper. I don't want that to be a void or cause a weak point. So just real quick, I went and toolbox got myself a socket and I'm just going to take the socket and roll them out smooth. So that way there's no voids in the metal. 
Do that one. Same thing on the other side with just both pieces. It really doesn't take a lot of pressure. Just light pressure to roll them out. So we'll just take all four of these pieces and get the right side up. You actually don't even have to roll it. I'm just sliding it across the screen. It's doing the same. And then with those done, as you can see, you can see where the fold kind of was. Right there, those are the two folds. You can see them a little bit. But if you notice, it's flattened out the screen. And you can even feel it. It's smooth. So that gets all of these screens ready for the flat surface. Now let's get to the bumper over here and get started with working on that. All right, so I have everything laid out on the cart next to me, keeping the table clean so we can spin this bumper around and not knock stuff all over the place. The iron's over here getting hot. Or it is hot now. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to repair this part here. It's held on by about another inch of plastic. Once we get this part put on or molded back together, then we can start putting the two pieces back together. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean this up, get some of the dirt and grime off of it. doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but I want to get it as, as clean as possible to do the repair. Okay, so with the plastic cleaned off, we don't need to sandpaper or anything because we are going to get, to get it now. We are going to be using the wire mesh to put it together and the iron to melt the plastic. So sanding it is not required or necessary. We have the foil tape for the back side. But right now, I have to get this lined up. One thing you don't want to do, and that is on these edges that are broken, you don't want to remove or add any plastic to them. Just leave it the way it is and get that, that broken part, that joint, as tight as you can or as close as you can to back to the way it used to be or, you know, fit snug. And then from there, you can use your finger to feel the smoothness of it. So I'm going to attempt because you could probably clamp, we could probably clamp this, but I'm going to let the bumper just rest at ease on the table flat. It seems to be lining up pretty good. What I'm going to do is try and, I'm just going to use duct tape for now on the back side, and we'll remove that afterwards. If I flip this over, it's just going to fall apart again. So we'll try and line this up and use the duct tape to hold it the best we can and as tight as we can. And then we'll flip it over and put the foil tape on it. All right, so let's carefully get this turned around. can look down the side of it I mean it's smooth across it's even right here you can see that it's even when we put the foil tape on there it should straighten it up some more may not get it exactly perfect like up top here there's actually damage pushing upwards from the hit we're not gonna be able to do anything with that right now that'll be later on we'll heat it up and reform it right now we're concerned about the joint and as you can see it's as tight as we're going to get it with that tape on the back side of it the line across the bottom here lined up we're going to go ahead and get the foil tape and get that on there just get an idea of how much we need here
Now you can use, you can just cut this in multiple pieces if you need to form it around something that's odd. But pretty thick foil tape. So we're going to start from, I'm actually going to start, I think on the bottom here. So I got to pull that together just a little bit. Got that pulled together as tight as I can get it. Again, as you're putting the tape on there, you're going to feel that joint being smooth across and not one side raised higher or lower than the other just about middle here there is that bump and that bend in there from when it got twisted but that's for later on so push the foil tape in here it's on there cut off the excess here save your little excess pieces too don't throw them out till you're done can always use them somewhere else. This off to the side. All right, so with that, get this turned around again. Carefully again. Just don't want to rip that joint apart or we'll have to retape the whole thing. When that pulled apart, we'll now sit here and get the tape, the duct tape off and double check our joint on this side. With the foil tape on there, you can see how tight that joint has become. You're going to have small little gaps like that because the plastic breaks and falls apart. This one I'm a little bit concerned about, but not too much. We'll, we'll try and pull it together, but I think the plastic broke apart and pieces or chunks of it came out during the accident you see here can't i can't get you underneath today there's no way to look underneath but you can see from all the way up here down that joint is tight so now it's time to fit our wire screen onto there our scissors now with this we have a it's not flat like this one up here where it's just straight i mean there's curves on all of them but this curls up underneath so what I was thinking about doing is I'm going to get a socket and roll the screen over. I'm going to just roll the screen over on the socket here, giving it a little bit of shape. And then that way, hopefully it fits up underneath it there without too much force. roll a little bit of extra roll into it and then we can just pull the shape back out if we have to to fit up in that curve so we'll do the whole piece we're not going to use this whole piece but roll the whole piece in there get where we're going to go so again cuts here um, we're probably going to do inch and a half maybe on each side Seems, seems about good. So. There. In there. Again. Cut that there. Again, you can get this stuff from any hardware store or big box store. It's just window screen. So it's not going to hurt to use a little bit of extra to make sure it holds on. So there's our piece. With that, tuck this underneath to here. Now again, remember, our cut doesn't come all the way up on the bumper, but we're gonna run the wire mesh all the way up to this line right here on the edge. So tuck that up underneath it there. Just give it a tad bit more strength and hope that it holds on. Shape that in there. I would say get it pre-bent with your fingers first before you start trying to use the, the hot iron. 
and then you can use the hot iron to finish pushing it in there we're going to start on the bottom work our way from the bottom of the bumper basically we're going to work from our way from the bottom of the bumper up because when we get to here we'll probably have to flip the bumper up and then this way this stuff is holding on to the joint in the end so and this is where ooh, that's hot and this is where the patience just comes in it's just time consuming sitting here getting the plastic to melt and getting the, the wire mesh in there you're you're going to heat it up the wire mesh you're going to heat that wire mesh up which and then in turn the heat will come down melting the plastic and pushing embedding that wire mesh into there so again just keep an eye on your joints which wow that's stuck already that quick the joint still looks good so here we go start of the first of very many repairs so actually it's actually pretty good so i'm going to use this i'm going to do the flat surface right here in the middle first it does I don't, there's no real right or wrong way to do this if your joint is put together correctly it's just a lot of patience getting this to uh heat up and go in there You can really get started, let it cool off. And I've never used this iron before, this kit. So I'll let you know how it does too, or what I think of it. Right now, if it stays this hot, it's actually doing pretty good. I get a little bit more done on here. It heats the plastic up really quickly, which I'm surprised. And it is super hot. That's the second time I just burnt my fingers on this. I'm just trying to hold the metal down. All right, that gets super hot, so hold on. Got a little bit of assistance to hold that screen down. But I'll show you real quick again. Well, you can see in that shot, let me bring it a little bit closer here. See how the plastic in this area has covered the screen and it hasn't right here? That's what you want. You want the whole screen covered up. So you almost cannot see it again. That's what you want to get. We're going to work our way from the middle now and just work our way up and down, working it, pushing it out.
Okay, so with that all mixed in there, we're gonna leave it the way it is for now. It's smoothed out enough. We're gonna end up putting an epoxy across the top of this to further harden it up. And that's pretty much as far as we'll go with this side. I don't really need to sand it because it's on the inside of the bumper. I guess you could if you wanted it smooth again, but I'm not worried about that. So let's move on to the next damaged spot. Okay, so the next plan of attack on this is gonna be the same kind of tear, but on the opposite side. There's not any, and the reason I'm going with that is there's not any stretching of the, the plastic or the rubber. There's not any stretching of it across the bottom here or across the bottom of the other side of the bumper here. It's all still in the same original shape. It just got torn, ripped apart when it got hit. Now that's just like, so just like up here, even if we were trying to work on this piece here, it won't come together because of all of this indentations and denting of the plastic, which is shrinking the plastic and pulling it away from these points. So we'll get this one done, and then we'll move on to these other ones, working our way up. We'll have to start using the heat gun and start pulling this out and stretching this plastic back out to its original shape or close to its original shape. That should be okay. Get our next piece of foil tape. All right, so as you can see, we haven't done anything else to this yet except for that one repair right there and duct tape on the backside holding this together. And the bumper's already starting to hold its shape and stand on its own again. Wish I could get that a little bit tighter. I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try and pull these together. Try and pull these together before I tape it completely closed. And the bumper is flexing just a little bit, but not too much. There we go. Got that one real tight. Hopefully it stays there. Stays tight like that. We'll check it. We'll come back. Next piece. Just using my finger and pushing right along the crack. Probably shouldn't have pulled that off. We'll just lay a whole new piece on there. I guess once you stick it the first time, it's not coming back, or it's not gonna stick again if you take it apart. We'll just take and lay this one over. And pulling it together the best I can. All right, I'm going to put two strings on here and pull the bottom of this together. I think that's going to help. That's a lot better. So now I can actually push on the back side of this here and it's lining it up almost to where you can't see it. So much better. All right, I'm happy with that. Move up to the top. So this top side is a little, giving us a little bit of trouble. I'm gonna tape up from here, just to the corner, and then we'll lay the bumper down flat and work on that corner. Okay. 
right, so the light's not too good here, but you can kind of see the gap right there. The light shining through there. We've got to get this lifted up and taped off. So I think we're going to have to just tape it off the best we can and then work it when we start molding the plastic into the screen. So we'll put the tape on there just to hold it for now. So we'll do the best we can, put together the best we can for now. And then deal with it from the other side. We'll work it from the other side the best we can. Um, we'll see what it looks like once we get the foil tape off, but it's holding the joint together. That's all we need right now. Okay, so when I moved the bumper and got it ready to put the screen on, we're going to start melting this side together. I noticed I was having problems at the top here getting the joint to line up best I could. Came back over here. You'll see I had the string over here tied on the lower end and nothing up here. And it was actually, you can see the loop in here. There was too much stress coming from the top, not allowing me to line this up the best way I could. So I got rid of this down here, retied this, and this came loose, but retied this, holding that cut, that break right there, holding those two pieces together. That did relieve a lot of the stress on this joint here. Not as much, and actually on the top too, but the top, we have that broken tab that we're going to have to fix as well. So we'll get to the top part and line it up afterwards, but the bottom is ready to go. I'm going to use the same screen that we rolled with the socket, rolled on this side. I'm going to get it matched for here and get it lined up. To cover the gap, this piece is going to work to cover the entire gap. It's going to give us about an one inch overlap on both sides. All right, so it's the same process as we did on the other side. Just get the screen mesh in there and push it up in. Kind of get it molded. Now, actually, I don't need all of this looking at it. I don't need all of this here. So we're probably going to, I'm going to cut this on an angle here. I'm going to mark it. We'll mark it out. Again, I'm going to start in the middle and then I'll work my way out both directions. So as you can see, even me just holding it on, holding on to it down here, or even up in the broken area, that's pretty sturdy now on the bottom. It's not the best yet, but it's sturdy and it's holding this back together in one piece. Get the foil tape pulled off. This one was already coming off. That's okay. The foil tape again is just there to hold the part of the bumper together and the foil obviously being able to tolerate the temperatures of the heat gun. But once you have it heated up and cooled off, the foil tape can be pulled off if you'd like. You don't have to leave it on there. So with those out of the way. So here you can see after the foil's been removed, 
that's pretty dead on from what it was before it was damaged. The top end, all the way around to the bottom, pretty darn close. Same thing on the other side here. It's a little bit off right there. Dent it in a little bit right there, and you can see there is a slight raise in that side of the panel. But again, as you go up, pretty darn close. You can see the dents, I guess you want to call them dents, but the bends in the plastic. Again, raised on the corner here a little bit. But overall, that's where you want to get it to. The next part of this bumper that we're going to have to repair, or I'm going to repair, before we get into this heavy damage here, is going to be where the bumper meets the front corner of the fender. This piece on the other side was ripped completely off or torn off. And that's the piece right here. We have to remove the metal bracket on the bottom side of the bumper right now, which is just held on by two prop rivets, one here and one here. Get that off and then we'll start repairing that part. So I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna do a little bit more than a half an inch overlay on this. This is basically holds your bumper to your fender in the corner. We can always cut out or dremel out those holes afterwards. Also remember that if you're doing something like this, you have to leave enough room for the other side. So we're just gonna cut this screen right in half and then we'll use it for both sides. Curves right here in the front. So we gotta make sure to cover that. I'll overlay the screen just ever so slightly here and cut this off here. When doing this or this type of repair right here is where it goes on the other piece of the bumper. I'm trying to get you a good shot right here. That line is where it goes on the other bumper. I don't want to bend or melt the plastic into that last bit of eighth of an inch part of the bumper just yet. We'll melt that when we fold this over, the screen over and put it to the bumper. So with the first part of the screen plastic welded in there, I've got it bent close. And then I'm just gonna take a straight edge and push it and get it as close as I can to the edge here, but without going over it. So as you can see, it's close but not right on the edge. Now we'll stick the rest of this on. Okay, so we have that in place. It is plastic welded as close as we can get without going into that broken joint. So we'll get the bumper set up and attach this back to the bumper. Just give this a little bit of a clean so the foil tape sticks 
that's the only reason why for right now on this. All the way out to the leading edge it's broken which is actually coming right through this corner here but we're not gonna be able to tape it because it's basically at 90 degree there's nowhere to put the tape on it so we'll just come flat to the end here close is good enough on that doesn't have to be exact again this is just to hold the two pieces together without melting the tape on the back side. Do our best to line this up. I'm going to fold this screen completely out of the way in this corner so it doesn't mess that up. We can push it back out when we're done. So with the curve in here, I'm just going to put some relief cuts in the foil tape to get the shape a little bit better. All right, I'm just slowly working the edge, the curve, back into where it's supposed to be. And that's why I've got these cuts to make it a lot easier in the foil to do it that way. You know, get that out of your way so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm working from this, you know, obviously this point, tape point out, lining up that joint as best I can. And then just folding the tape over top, taping it down. doesn't have to be exact you want it close or as close as possible that you can get it but we are going to come back and fill all these in like I showed you earlier we're going to come back and fill all these in before we do the final body work on it this foil tape is actually pretty strong it's holding really good so you can feel with your finger the curve you can feel when it's lined up or when it's not you know laying over top of itself All right, so that's stuck on good. Let's get it flipped over again and see what the other side, the back side looks like. Just gonna go ahead and take this little tool I got here, or if you have a flathead screwdriver, and we'll just push this into the corner as tight as we can without pushing this lip up and off. That's good. Now we're going to start in the middle, but up in the middle at the actual 90 degree bend here, work our way across, attaching the two pieces again, and then we'll come back out 
and finish out the field of the screen. So that's pretty much it for this repair at this point right now. Let's get the foil off the other side and see what it looks like. Alright, so with that piece on, not too shabby on the joint. We still have to fill all this in on fill all this uh, in later. But it's lined up, it's smooth, going around the corner. Now, I was not able to get in deep in this corner here with the iron, so I have to figure something out. So this is still a little bit loose there. This is where you'd probably end up using that filler rod to fill in these gaps. We'll get to that a little bit later. Looking good. All right, so I know this video is pretty long and I appreciate the ones that stuck around and watched to the end. I try to show you how to do these repairs at home yourself so where you can save some money. You don't have to necessarily always go out to the body shop. Now, your bumper might not be in the same condition this one was in. This is pretty bad. You might just have a small tear or something and you can do the repairs. I will leave a link in the description below to the kit again that I got off of Amazon. Now, they're not sponsoring the channel or anything but it's worth the money that you pay for this kit. It's not a professional, like professional grade kit, but it's performing like a professional kit. In our next video, we're gonna be going over and we're gonna be starting to do the stretching or reforming of this bumper so we can finish getting these tears, these other three other tears repaired. Like I said earlier, we can't do those repairs because even if I pull this tight, there's an inch, inch and a half gap up top here because of all of the shrinking or bumper being pushed over in that direction and being crushed. So with that, we're gonna wrap this up. Also, don't forget, we are gonna be doing a thousand subscriber giveaway. And we are, will be, when we reach a thousand subscribers, we're gonna be giving away this compact Milwaukee impact gun. Now it has two batteries, a charger, and the compact half inch impact gun. So share these videos with like-minded people. Let's get to that thousand or over that thousand subscriber count. Subscribe right here. Hit that notification bell so when I post the next video, you'll be notified. And again, thanks for watching.